Hi guys, in this video, we are going to look at the Breslow estimator for the baseline hazard, or H0. A short recap, we are talking about Cox proportional hazard, which models the hazard as this function of some covariates. Remember that we maximize the partial likelihood to find estimators for the regression coefficients betas, which we'll denote by beta hat. But we still don't have the complete distribution since we don't have H0. Cox, in his original paper, suggested to model H0 as a spike function, meaning zero everywhere except at event times, and to use maximum likelihood and the given beta hat estimators to find values at each spike. Breslow, as a comment in the discussion that followed Cox's paper, suggested a simpler approach, which models H0 as a step function. We also assume that the hazard is constant between events as opposed to few events sharing the same hazard. Let's see how we can estimate this step function. So we assume H0 is a step function, which can be written like this, where each step value is given by a lambda parameter. Remember that the PDF is the hazard times the survival. So we get this and this. Using the identity that the survival is the exponent of the minus cumulative hazard, we get this. Taking the log of this, we get this. Now, plugging in the Cox model assumption, we get the following. We want to take the derivative of this quantity with regards to each lambda. Notice that the first term will only contain a lambda for events that happen in that lambda's time frame. The second term doesn't depend at all on any lambdas. And the third term will only contain a lambda for events that happened after the start of that lambda time frame, that is, after t of j minus 1. Denoting by dj the number of events that happened in the jth time frame, then the derivative with regards to a specific lambda j will be equal to this. The first term is the derivative of the first term in the log likelihood, since the h0 will be equal to lambda and delta will be equal to 1, the derivative of log of x is 1 over x, and then we take the sum over all the terms that actually had an event in that time frame. In the second term, the exponent stays the same. h0 of u will be equal to lambda j between tj minus 1 and tj if ti is greater than tj minus 1. So the derivative will be 1 and the integral will be the limits. Equating to zero, we get that the maximum is attained at lambda equals this. And we can also write the index of the sum as i in the risk set at time tj instead of ti greater than tj. Given these estimators, we have the hazard function and the distribution is now completely defined. We can compute the cumulative hazard, the survival, the CDF, or the PDF. Calculating the cumulative hazard for a given individual and time, we get this. Calculating the integral of the step function, we replace each step level with its estimator. And the integral becomes the sum of this level times the section it covers. Note that technically, for the last section, we might have that t is smaller than tj, so the sections might not actually cancel each other. But for a large enough sample size, this is insignificant, and we will write that this is equal to this. The term in blue is sometimes referred to as the cumulative baseline hazard. We can now calculate the non-parametric survival, CDF, and PDF functions. Finally, notice that if we take beta to be equal to 0 and denote by yj the number at risk at time tj, we get that the cumulative hazard is equal to this, which is exactly the Nelson-Allen estimator for the cumulative hazard, which we can also transform into a survival function. And likewise, Breslow suggested to set this to be the survival function, since this will recreate the Kaplan-Meier estimator if we set beta is equal to zero. However, as far as I can see, this is not a direct derivation of the identity given here, but rather a heuristic or analogy. The direct derivation would give this. That's all for this video. Hope you found it useful and see you in the next one.